King Hurricane Ian kind of starting to mm -hmm. make its way up to South Carolina. Yeah, we're make, making a landfall just north mm -hmm. of Charleston this afternoon, and uh, we're going to see the worst of the weather for uh, coastal Georgia and especially the low country will be now up to about lunchtime today. Okay. Once we get after lunchtime, we really see things improving fairly quickly as we go through the afternoon. So let's get right to it this morning. Category one hurricane. You can see the center of circulation there and poorly organized this morning. A lot of dry air working in and also the National Hurricane Center just said a lot of wind shear too that's not allowing this to develop a whole lot more before it makes landfall. Like I said, just north of Charleston. You can see where the bulk of the rain is from eastern North Carolina, the outer banks through Myrtle Beach, Charleston, and most of it is to our north, but some of these bands of rain continue to wrap into our area. You notice this uh, some right off the coast of a Buford around uh, Hunting Island, Fripp Island, and just off to the east of Hilton Head. These rain bands will continue to move on shore as we go throughout the uh, morning hours. So I do expect to see some tropical downpours, especially in the low country Buford, even back toward uh, Hardyville and Ridgeland and eastern parts of Chatham County there around Tybee, also uh, uh, Wilmington Island. We'll see some of these uh, showers begin to move in. Most of this today has been mainly light to moderate rain, but I do expect to see, like I said, some tropical downpours uh, later uh, throughout the uh, morning. Here's the latest advisory. It just came out at 5 o'clock, moving north, northeast at uh, 9 miles per hour. So we're going to continue to see this slowly turn more to the north and eventually north, northwest uh, this afternoon. Landfall a little later today, uh, right around uh, Charleston or just north of Charleston. And once uh, Ian moves just to the east of Savannah, that's when we'll see the bulk of the worst weather begin to move to our north, and that will occur uh, after about probably about mid morning, especially after lunchtime today. And we'll get it out of here pretty quickly. Actually, as it moves out, we'll see some nice weather uh, for tomorrow. So the impacts that we're going to see mainly right at the coast inland areas for this. Some spots, not even a drop of rain out of this. It's been mainly along and east of I-95 overnight last night. Uh, like I said, some areas not a drop of rain. Maybe for the low country could pick up an additional one inch of rain. And coastal flooding and will be possible as well. Meteorologist Melissa Hall will talk about this in just a second. Gusty winds already seeing winds gusting at times uh, over 50 miles per hour, and that'll continue throughout the rest of the morning. For more team coverage, here is meteorologist Melissa Hall. Yeah, John, like you were just mentioning, those winds have been a big factor with this tropical storm force. The strongest we had seen was out at Tybee Island at 50 miles an hour, but as Ian continues to move closer to the low country, you can see Hilton Head has surpassed that. They've had a gust up to 52 miles an hour, but you feel it across the area. Savannah, Beaufort, mid 40s, and that's not the only thing that we're feeling this morning. Well, we had some rain come down and we were expecting some coastal flooding. Now, fortunately, with Ian tracking further east, that means that that high tide on Friday that we were expecting to have major coastal flooding. Well, right now you can see 10 feet expected right before noon, which is right at that moderate level. And after that, well, by Saturday morning, high tide, just 8.5 feet. So well below that mark. And as we head into the weekend, things look fabulous. So we get through today with those coastal showers, those winds still gusting 40 to 50 miles an hour at times. Temperatures not warming with this. You heard John say earlier, it feels more like a nor'easter than a tropical system. Well, by this afternoon, the clouds decrease dry winds. They're going to ease up too. We're going to see those overnight lows starting to fall with the clouds clearing out. We'll get into the mid 50s by tomorrow. That sunshine comes back and a light southerly breeze in the weekend. Fortunately, looking fantastic after Ian is completely out of here. All right, thanks so much, Melissa. Well, our team coverage continues now with our crew out on Tybee Island. Our Nakaya Carrero is joining us live and Nakaya, I know it's been pretty windy out there. Is the wind still picking up out there? It surely is. We've been out here since early this morning and the wind has been coming in, you know, moments, you, a few minutes go by, it's calm, and then the wind comes back and it's those 50 mile per hour winds that's bringing the temperature even colder than what it is right now. It's actually 59 degrees right now, but let me show you and I to give you an idea of what the wind is looking like out here. There is a flag up there. I'm going to have Herman show you and the flag is whipping. It, it's actually ripped if you can see the tears in the flag, but not only is this flag whipping left and right, but the pole is actually moving the flagpole itself. That's how strong the wind is out here on Tybee Island. It gives you an idea of what it's what it's like out here and what those wind gusts bring through the island as it's coming through in spurts and we will continue to be out here you know s seeing the environment and being out here and we're expecting people to probably start coming any moment now to the beach to get those morning runs in so we'll try to get some of them in also 
All right, Nakai, looking forward to hearing from them. Thanks so much. Live on Tybee Island.